the 1900s, physicists already worked on some bizarre quantum mechanical properties of the subatomic world, like particle wave duality, photoelectric effect, black body radiation, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, quantum entanglement, and so much more. It showed that the subatomic world works entirely different and that in order to understand its mechanism is to think differently in a hard and non-intuitive way, just like thinking outside the box. That is why Einstein found himself grappling with it in the early 20th century. Albert Einstein was not ready to give up in letting a non-intuitive quantum theory to justify the existence of this reality and that there needs to be a more fundamental and deterministic theory that suggests the truth about the workings of this reality. A world where reality bends and twists, particles can be in multiple places at once and outcomes are uncertain and the very fabric of existence seems to dance to an invisible tune or from a unified field. There is so much. We are yet to understand what it is, really. Right now, to what we already understood in quantum mechanics so far coming to 2024 is like a pile of sand picked up compared to what's left in the vast Sahara Desert. On May 15, 1935, Einstein, along with colleagues Boris Podolsky and Nathan Rosen, posed a profound question in a paper from the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey. Can quantum mechanical description of physical reality be considered complete? We have covered about halfway there in our previous video as part one. The rest of this will be explained here as part two of the video. We deep dived into his paper and some fundamentals of quantum mechanics. Make sure to watch that video after this, but to summarize it, Einstein concluded that there are two statements to which one is right and the other is wrong. That is either one, the quantum mechanical description of reality given by the wave function is not complete or two. If the operators corresponding to two physical quantities do not commute, then the two quantities cannot have simultaneous reality. There can be only one statement be true and not both being either right or wrong, which doesn't matter. In the previous video towards the end, we took an experiment of two systems, interacting for a period of time on one of its translational axes, or the x-axis. We have only mentioned the idea of a traditional and non-traditional eigenfunction, but never covered the full experiment until now. Remember, upon starting the experiment, we assume the wave function does contain a complete description of the physical reality of the system in the state to which it corresponds. At first sight, this assumption is entirely reasonable, which is that the information obtainable from a wave function seems to correspond exactly to what can be measured without altering the state of the system. The aim is to predict with certainty the value of a physical quantity without in any way disturbing a system, then to say there exists an element of physical reality corresponding to this physical quantity. Coming back to the experiment. We introduced eigenfunction of a physical quantity, but any physical quantity can have multiple numbers of eigenfunctions and corresponding eigenvalues. So let's take a physical quantity A from system one, where it has an eigenfunctions and corresponding eigenvalues like A1, A2, etc. Let's take x1 and x2 as variables for system 1 and system 2, respectively. Let's designate the corresponding wave function by psi for two systems in interaction, because according to quantum mechanics, we cannot separately find the wave functions as their separate wave functions have been combined and interacted, sharing and connectedness such that one cannot be described as separate but depend on each other. We are measuring physical quantities on system 1 without disturbing system 2. So all the eigenfunctions of system one together sum up as a wave function of system one and for system two, we designate a different symbol of their wave functions. Now upon taking a measurement on system one by a physical operator A, we get an eigenvalue AK, therefore the system one left in the state given by this eigenfunction, and for system two left in state as this function. From a designated wave function, now to a collapsed wave function of both of the systems. Now upon taking a different physical quantity B, for to be measured on system 1, it would return a different eigenvalue and a different eigenfunctions for both systems left in the state separately. 
We see therefore that as two different measurements performed upon the first system led to the second system left in the state with two different wave functions. This experiment was taken in a general way with respect to any operator. Therefore, Einstein concluded that on the other hand, since at the time of measurement the two systems no longer interact, no real change can take place in the second system in consequence of anything that may be done to the first system. Meaning because of two different measurements taken on system one, no real change can be seen on system two. That is all of this makes sense to say that it is meant by the absence of an interaction between the two systems. Thus, it is possible to assign two different wave functions to the same reality, meaning having two simultaneous realities. Now consider these systems as particles, and there is a chance these two wave functions might be reflecting as eigenfunctions of two non-commuting operators to some physical quantities, just like P and Q, as in momentum and positional value. Last experiment was in a general way for any type of operators, but what if it was specific, like the two non-commuting operators? By assuming that these are two non-commuting operators, Einstein showed by mathematical derivation that it is in general possible for two eigenfunctions of two non-commuting operators corresponding to physical quantities. Now there you have it, we started with a question upon which statement is right and wrong. From thereupon, we took some thought experiments with some mathematical derivations. We started from assuming that the quantum mechanical description of physical reality is complete, and it is assumed to be fairly simple. From there, Einstein showed that for the second system, by measuring the first system, acquired two different wave functions to the same reality. Then we showed that the two eigenfunctions in general are possible to be its non-commuting operators with corresponding eigenvalues. Therefore, it concludes like this that the quantum mechanical description of physical reality is complete, considering that the operators corresponding to two physical quantities that do not commute, the two quantities can have simultaneous reality as mentioned before. This is in full contradiction to quantum mechanics, which means to say that operators corresponding to two physical quantities that do not commute cannot have simultaneous reality, which makes sense to opt negation of quantum mechanical description of physical reality considered as complete. Thus, we are forced to conclude that the quantum mechanical description of physical reality given by wave functions is not complete. Einstein said this. Indeed, one would not arrive at our conclusion if one insisted that two or more physical quantities can be regarded as simultaneous elements of reality only when they can be simultaneously measured or predicted. On this point of view, since either one or other would not plot simultaneously of the quantities and can be predicted, they are not simultaneously real. This makes the reality of and depends on the process of measurement carried out on the first system, which does not disturb the second system in any way. No reasonable definition of reality would be expected to permit this. To put it simply, the reality of P and Q depends on the process of measurement carried out on the first system, which doesn't affect the second system in any way. Essentially, it's saying that the reality of P and Q shouldn't depend on how we measure them, especially if the measurement on one system doesn't influence the other. Finally, the last paragraph of the paper discusses the limitations of the wave function in describing physical reality. It acknowledges that while the wave function is a useful tool for predicting outcomes in quantum mechanics, it doesn't provide a complete description of physical reality. However, it also leaves open the possibility that there might be a theory or framework that can offer a more complete description of reality than the wave function alone. In simpler terms, it's saying that while the wave function isn't enough on its own, there might be another theory out there that can fill in the gaps and give us a more comprehensive understanding of the quantum world. This is what Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen had to say about quantum mechanics. Well, Einstein was certain to get back an answer, a feedback, from the community that supports the quantum field theory. After his paper was published, his paper got a ton of attention and certainly did Sir Erwin Schrodinger's attention too. 
This prompted Erwin Schrodinger to write an article on discussion of probability relations between separated systems in 1935. He stated that when two systems, of which we know the states by their respective representatives, enter into temporary physical interaction due to known forces between them, and when after a time of mutual influence, the systems separate again, then they can no longer be described in the same way as before. That is to say that by endowing each of them with a representative of its own. I would not call that one, but rather the characteristic trait of quantum mechanics, the one that enforces its entire departure from classical lines of thought. By the interaction, the two representatives or psi functions have become entangled. This is where the term quantum entanglement came from. Also, Einstein's paper prompted Niel Bohr to publish a paper in 1935 and under the same title. He said that in quantum mechanics, the more precisely we know one quantity, the less precisely we can know its complementary quantity like the position and momentum. He suggests that attempting to deduce predetermined values for both position and momentum of a particle, based on measurements performed on another entangled particle, is not valid. Since measurements of position and momentum are complementary and exclusive, the inference of predetermined values for one quantity based on measurements of the other is not justified within the framework of quantum mechanics. So what's the final conclusion? The debate around quantum mechanics completeness was going on among scientists for a few decades until a CERN scientist decided to test it by an interesting theoretical, but not yet practical, an experiment, which later was found testable with that time's technology advancements. There are stories left after these events that solidified the future of quantum mechanics. But that's for another upcoming video, as there is so much to talk about. I hope this video was interesting enough showcasing the starting battles of quantum mechanics in its beginning time in the early 90s. If you liked this video so far, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more new interesting stories. And do let me know in the comments what you think about this early 90s story in the scientific community. Love to know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Learn, Manage, Pro.